In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hope is one of those words that we use so often that we've forgotten what it really means. Like the word love, hope has been detached from its true meaning and from its divine source, so that now it means almost nothing. I hope that you're well. I hope that it won't rain today. I hope to be moving house soon. Hope has become something vague, something wished for, something that might happen, but also might not. Something that's to do with dreams and uncertainty. It's a hope that is founded in us, in our contingent and unpredictable selves. It's something that we do and therefore wholly unreliable. But hope is not just a verb. It's not something to do, but something to have. Because hope, the second theological virtue, has its foundation in God. Like faith and like love, it comes from God and leads us to God. It's the opposite of vagueness. Christian hope is a firm and certain expectation of what is to come. It's a hope that is founded on the rock of Christ, on the divine promises given to Peter and the church. It's a hope that leaves no room for doubt and cannot fail. Writing back in 2007 towards the beginning of his papacy, the late lamented Pope Benedict wrote that the present day crisis of faith is essentially a crisis of Christian hope. Yes, despite the overuse of that word, we live in a hopeless age, in a world devoid of true hope, where everything seems uncertain. Who knows what the future will bring? If you listen to the ideological alarmists, it's all doom and gloom. No hope for the planet. No hope for humanity. And that's nothing new. Writing to the formerly godless Ephesians, St. Paul reminded them that without Christ, they had no hope. Without God, they had no future. A godless world is a hopeless world. For us human beings, the future is unreal and uncertain and therefore scary. But for God, the future is already real and totally certain, and so there's nothing to fear. In the words of Pope Benedict, it's only when the future is certain that it becomes possible to live the present as well. Advent is a time of expectation, a time that renews in us the Old Testament's anticipation of the coming of the Messiah, and a time that prepares us year by year for the coming of Christ at the final judgment. And so Advent is a season of hope. It's a season for us to ask with St. John the Baptist in today's Gospel, Art thou he that art to come? Tu es qui venturus es. But knowing full well, trusting in truth itself, that the answer can only be yes. An answer that we ourselves will provide shortly in the Nicene Creed. Et iterum venturus est Cum gloria, it is he that is to come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. We hope that he will come. We hope that his advent 
is near, that, as we pray daily in the Our Father, his kingdom come. But we hope not with the empty hope of the world, the hope of a reed shaken with the wind, the hope of those clothed in soft garments. Our hope is an unshakable and firm hope that comes from the one who is to come, the one in whom we hope. It's not a theory that we subscribe to. It's not an ideology or a philosophy that we pin our hopes on, but it's a person. Our hypothesis is a hypostasis, a hypostasis who is both God and man, united forever in what we call the hypostatic union. We look for no other but him. We look for no other but Jesus Christ. We may not see a star over Bethlehem this Christmas, but the star of hope shines for us constantly in this world of despair and desolation, a star that guides us and gives us all the means that we need to reach that eternal light, that eternal beatitude promised to us by him whose promises cannot fail. So may our prayer this Advent be those closing words of St. Paul that we heard in today's epistle. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope and in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.